uh, uh, facing tomorrow. And I think perhaps there's no single uh, idol which is uh, of more importance for tomorrow than uh, uh, peace. Israel has been fighting wars for almost a hundred years. Um, the the, the uh, hostilities began in 1922. We're, we're 89 years away from that, okay? Uh, we've been fighting for 89 years, and we've been talking about peace for all those uh, all those years. For 89 years, we've been shouting peace, 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 and uh, it doesn't seem to work. So it, it didn't work yesterday, and um, we have to ask ourselves what we're doing wrong. In, in, in a big way, yes? Not to try harder the same things that we've been doing all the time, but maybe we should take a different tack in order to arrive at peace. Now, uh, this class is, is called uh, a game theoretic perspective on, on this question of peace. And actually, it's too bad that it's being scheduled at the same time as the um, uh, as the uh, class uh, next door, which is given by Professor Eric Maskin of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, because basically what I'm going to try to sell to you today is the idea that just like almost everything else, all all human activity is based on incentives. You have to have the right incentives. Yesterday I gave a talk at an industrial organization where I spoke about the incentives uh, in, 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 uh, in caring for the environment, the incentives in, in, uh, um, in um, planning an auction, uh, all kinds of things. In, in all spheres of life, especially in game theory, uh, Incentives are the name of the game. Okay, so let me try to spell that out a little bit. Game theory analyzes interactions between different entities striving to different goals. Okay, that's what game theory is. That's what game theory is about. Well, what is this loudspeaker? Uh, what's that? Okay, so we'll we'll uh, we'll wait for them to finish the announcement. Tre kale Okay. Now, idea in game theory, in interactions between different entities striving to different goals, like, for example, the Jews and the Arabs, they are different entities striving to different goals, but they are interacting with each other. The key idea is that of rationality. What does rationality mean? Rationality means we call a person's behavior rational if it is in his, if it best promotes his goals given his information. So there are two key elements over here. Um, the, the key elements are 
uh, the goals of the person, the goals of the entity, I should say, not necessarily a person, and the information that that person has. And um, the, the um, well, let's, uh, this leads directly to the idea of incentives, as we will see presently. So with this definition, can war be rational? Is it possible for war to be rational? Can war promote a, a, the goals of a nation? Uh, this is uh, uh, war is a terrible thing. People get killed, people uh, get wounded, a lot of property is destroyed. How can war be rational? Well, let's ask another question. Can strikes be rational? Uh, can strikes somehow promote, strikes also, a lot of property is lost, a lot of time is lost, a lot of woe to everybody involved in the strike, the employer, the employee, the public. Can that be something rational? Yeah. Uh, I'll ask an even more provocative question. Can racial or gender discrimination be rational? Can it promote the goals of the person who, who was discriminated. So the answer in brief is yes, they can be. All these things can be rational. They can be, promote the goals of the, not, not, I'm not talking about the goals of, of, uh, of um, somebody who, who, let's say, hates blacks or something like that. Yeah? that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the economic goals. Yeah? And um, in strikes also, I'm talking about the economic goals. I'm talking about, in, in war, I'm talking about the political goals, the legitimate political goals, in our case, both of the Jews and of the Arabs. Can, can, uh, uh, can war be rational in that case? And I say, yes, all these things can be rational. See, we take all the ills of the world and dismiss them by calling them irrational. If they are rational, if they promote the goals of the entities undertaking them, the nations or the people or the companies or the unions, once we understand that they are, we can try to address the problem. If we dismiss them as irrational, as crazy, for example, people say that Mr. Ahmadinejad, the leader of Iran, is irrational, yes? If we dismiss him as irrational, we can't address the problem, okay? If we try to understand his motives, what information he has, yes, and what his goals are, then we can address the problem, okay? So that, that's, a, this is a, a, this is something very important to realize. War can be rational, uh, strikes can be rational, uh, Discrimination can be rational, and we can try to fix those things once we understand that they are. And it is very, very important to realize, an important note is that rationality is not good, okay? It's not something that I'm gonna try to sell to you, okay? It's basically, it's egoism. You, you try to promote your own goals. Of course, your goals can be good goals, okay? They can be bad goals, or they can be good goals. Rationality itself is not something which is good, which is to be advocated, which is, yeah, it's, it's not like loving your mother, okay? It's, it's, it's there, yes? And we better, we better understand, we better understand that people on the whole are rational, yes? To understand our world and more important to promote our goals, okay? We should understand the workings of rationality. And that's what game theory is all about, okay? Now, economics is, is one branch of game theory. It's where people interact, yeah? People interact, they make deals with each other. When you're selling a house, you want to get a higher price. When you're buying the house, you want to get a lower price, yeah? So people have different goals, yeah? Uh, and the whole of economics, and in fact of game theory more generally, 
is incentives. That is the whole, the beginning and the end of game theory, the beginning and the end of economics. And we have many examples of that. We have taxes. If you overtax, you decrease revenue because you're changing the incentives of people. You're, you're getting them to avoid taxes or uh, even shh, evade taxes, yeah? Uh, yeah? You are giving them incentives for that. Or, in fact, not avoid or not evade, but simply to work less, okay? So, uh, by raising tax rates, you can lower tax revenue, okay? Now, that's, a, that's an insight that's an economic insight, which many people don't, don't realize that, okay? Many governments don't realize that. When I came to Israel, when I was already 10 or 15 years in Israel, I once went to a doctor to get an electrocardiogram. And, and uh, he said, uh, Mr. Alman, you were as healthy as an ox afterwards. I said, what's the damage? What do I owe you? He said, uh, 10 pounds, 10 Israeli pounds, which was money at the time, okay? So I said, okay, here's 10 pounds, give me a receipt, please. He said, oh, you want a receipt? 70 pounds, okay. <laughs> uh, it's incentives, okay, when you're charging that, and the tax rate really used to be over 80% over here, the marginal tax rate, and that's crazy, because people don't pay that kind of money, it looks good, okay. That's one example. Uh, Market economies, all right? Uh, the, the idea of socialism, it's a wonderful idea to each according to his uh, needs from each according to his ability. It's a great idea, but pe it doesn't work. Yeah. People, the people of Vietnam, the people of China were starving until they went to market economies. Redemption of prisoners is another issue. Maybe we'll have time for that after. So now I'd like to talk about incentives for peace. In other words, I want to say what, how can we use game theory ideas to get peace, which we haven't gotten now for 90 years already, okay? Close to 100 years we've been fighting because, and, and all the time striving for peace, all the time, not getting it, all right? So, what these ideas that I've presented to you just now and that Professor Maskin is presenting next door, incentive engineering, incentives, yes, that, how can we apply that to peace? So, one idea would be to make concessions to the other side, okay? Each side should make concessions to the other side. Does that bring peace? Well. Let, we, we, you don't even have to look at game theory for that, you just look at history. In, in Munich, 1938, the, the kind of things that one was hearing in the 30s, and you look at the newspapers and the books of that time, is exactly the kind of thing that uh, the Honorable uh, President Perez is promoting in this country. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it, peace and, and and uh, Chamberlain came back from Munich, having made a concession to Hitler, and said, ladies and gentlemen, I have brought with me to the, he said this to the House of Commons, ladies and gentlemen, I have brought with me peace in our time. 